Hey y'all, it's me, Nafateria with CPDollars.com, and today I am sitting down with Shoot Media Group, and one of the members of that collective is Chris here, and Chris, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Yeah, so my name is Chris Burnett uh, of Chris Burnett Photography. I was born and raised in the west side of Chicago, and that is where our studio is housed here in the West Loop. So what do you do? Oh, so I am photo uh, primarily a studio photographer. I also do music and video as well. And yeah. Okay, so when you say music, what all do you do with music? So I record my own music. So okay. I write and sing and rap. And I also, well, used to uh, be in the choir. Okay. So I used to be a choir boy. All the greats, that's where their stories start, in the choir. I love it. I Usually love the it. church. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's where I started, the church choir, and then I did uh, all-city choir, and then concert choir. So. Oh, so you legit like a vocalist. Yeah, you know, I get okay. the do re you know. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So do you have any, um, like, formal education? Did you go to school for this, or was it just a passion that you picked up? No, I uh, kind of went the Kanye West route in terms of school. Uh, dropped out of college. Um, and this is just the beginning of my my own success story. Okay. Um, I feel like college, like I always wanted to go to college. I did go, um, but just circumstances and financial circumstances weren't the best at the time. And um, I just never ended up going back. Um, but yeah, I would want to eventually go back okay. just to, you know, check that off my bucket list. Understood. Um, but I also don't want to like beat myself up in terms of like all my friends graduated and I never did it. So like it's just find the balance of doing it for myself and you know just my own reasons. Understood. Yeah. Okay. Comparison is definitely the thief of joy. So mm -hmm. don't compare yourself to other people. I would have to say that because even though they may have gotten that formal education, you're mm -hmm. doing something else and pretty good at what you do Thank so you. I think you should take that into consideration and you know the degree will come yeah. when you're ready for it but um so I'm going to ask what got you started in photography um so I guess technically I'm a second generation photographer okay um my dad was never like a photographer in like the official like studio setting and stuff but he always had like one of the latest cameras, like especially like growing up as kids, mm -hmm. he always had the latest camera, video camera, and he would, you know, take photos at family events just okay. here and there and record, you know, uh, record like moments of us growing up as kids. Um, so as I got older, I borrowed one of his uh, cameras at the time, it was a Canon T3i, and I just walked around downtown messing around with it and I took this one photo on my way home from work. And I'm like, wow, this actually was a decent photo and I actually okay. enjoy doing this. And so I just started, you know, the repetition of just walking around, taking random photos. And then I would start meeting people downtown and taking photos of them. Um, and then it eventually grew into like, this is actually something I see myself doing long term and enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I got, you know, start to learn and teach myself photography through YouTube. And um, as I started doing it in like the business aspect, I started to enjoy capturing moments for people. Okay. So like one of the main reasons I even still do photography to this day is that after my mom passed, when I look back, I didn't have many like recent photos of myself with her. Oh, okay. So one thing I try to do now as a professional photographer I try to keep my prices to a uh, economic standpoint, so that families can enjoy the photo shoots more often than they uh, could afford to with regular photographers. Because certain, some of these prices people be charging for yeah. photo shoots can be ridiculous. Yeah. But one thing I always want to do, even if I do ever, you know, like, well, I am going to raise my rates just because I should and I deserve that for myself. But I also make sure that in every aspect that I go back and like give back to people still. So like, for example, with the sip and shoots that we do, I started off doing those completely free out of pocket. So okay. I'm paying for, you know, the drinks, I'm paying for food, 
just invite people out to the studio, have a good time, take pictures. Mm -hmm. So that's just like one aspect of how I'm like trying to keep myself to give back to people so they can get affordable photos of themselves and their loved ones so they can have those memories for years to come. Okay. So I will say one thing that I've learned um, working with my boss is you can't pour from an empty glass. So if you're not making no money, you can't really help yeah. nobody else. So I yeah. would say raise your prices, but yes, of course, if you want to still keep, mm -hmm. you know, be economic about it, but don't don't shame yourself for that. Mm -hmm. Your price is your price. You and you got to eat too. Yeah. yeah. You got to eat too. And if you want to help other people, you still got to, mm -hmm. you know, you got to help yourself first and get yourself out of the situation so you can't reach down and help somebody else. Yeah. So, and um, you touched on the sip and shoot. Can you talk mm -hmm. about that a little bit more? Yeah, so that is an event I started doing uh, in 2020. Two, or yeah, I think it was 2022 okay. um, at my last studio and basically I would you know reach out to my network of photographers models and we would all just meet up at the studio and create so okay. we have um, people of all different you know fields that just come out want to have a good time have a few drinks and just create um, so we would do photo shoots together and then we'd all just invite our friends and family as well. So it just naturally grew into almost like a kind of like a kickback for photographers and models. And we just, you know, practice our skills, bounce off each other like ideas okay. to keep us sharp with creativity. And then like it's just a place for people to come and practice in a studio setting. So a lot of my friends have been doing photography for years but they haven't been working in the studios. Okay. So that's a way they can come through and get practice with using lights and learn different techniques with strobes and how lights reflect off each other and you can control the lights in a more stable environment versus shooting outside, you at the mercy of the sun and whatever flash you got or something. Yeah. But it's a completely different setting and it's just, you know, a way for people to come out, practice, have fun and network. Okay. Oh, I love that. So what advice would you give to someone starting off in photography? Um, the advice I would give to photographers starting off, one, <laughs> don't buy that cheap Amazon kit uh, for photography with the little light bulbs and you know you, you get the backdrop for under a hundred dollars. <laughs> don't do that, please. Okay. Um, on, <laughs> like I'm laughing, but like I'm so serious as well. Oh Worst God. investment. Um, and you know, just I know all my friends have gone through this. That's why, why they laughing as well because everybody starts off buying that kit, and you realize immediately it is the biggest waste of money. It's not going to give you clean images that you desire. Okay. So don't do that. But aside from that, I would say don't get in your own way mm -hmm. um, because that aspect that we were talking about, where you're comparing yourself to others, and yeah. you know, like. You can easily, especially on the social media area, you can easily be your own worst enemy in that aspect. Yeah. So just stay out of your own way and just keep trying new things and you'll be all right. Okay. And then my last one, what is the obstacle that you had going into photography in the creative space? Um, my obstacle, well, in that same aspect, I, what I had myself was getting in my own way. Okay. So I would you know, see these images that people are posting and compare it to my own images. And I'm like, man, I ain't nowhere near as good as this photographer. My camera ain't as new as theirs. And mm -hmm. I'll never be able to take photos as good as them. And to the point where, like, I wouldn't even post my images on social media anymore. Oh, no. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll post a picture that I thought was amazing. I get 20 likes. Yeah. That's Meanwhile, happening. somebody posts something that I would think is a subpar image. They getting a hundred likes, two hundred likes. I get that. And I had to learn the hard way. Like, one, that's not the true value of your photography. And two, especially now, that's algorithms. Yeah. That's not even the real testament of your network of people, and everybody's not getting the exposure to your images anyway. So, just take that with a grain of salt. Don't use social media and cloud and statistics as a way of valuing your photography. Just value it based off of the memories you create for other people. And that's what really brings me to joy photography. Okay, perfect. And then I do want to say, uh, by all means, did you want to promote your sip and shoot? Or? Yeah, sure. So the next sip and shoot we have is coming up 
January 27th, and it'll be right here at Shoot Media Group headquarters. Um, you can hit the link in my bio. My Instagram is at Chris X Burnett, and click that link, and you can join us at the next sip and shoot. If you can't make it to January, the next one after that will be on February 17th, which is also All Star Weekend. So you don't want to miss that one too. Okay. Well, it was nice talking to you. Thank you. And Same I here. look forward to working with you.